Flames shooting out of a known squatter home in North Park. Neighbors say illegal activity has been happening here for months, and tonight they're hoping this fire will finally force some changes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anna Laurel. And I'm Steve Price. Carlo and Marcella have the night off. Now, we've been reporting on this home in the past. Neighbors trying to get help, fearing something like this could happen. Flames shooting out of a known squatter home in North Park just before 6 Tuesday morning. And for neighbors, this is good news. I'm happy nobody got hurt, but I'm happy as hell that this fire happened because the city can't ignore this. I mean, a fire is about as dangerous as it gets. Andy Lobb is one of several neighbors who, for months, have been complaining about the two abandoned homes at the end of Dale Street. Drug trafficking, sex trafficking, people moving in and out, and these are all squatters and people who obviously aren't paying rent in these homes. Working for you, CBS 8 looked into property records and discovered both homes in the 3300 block of Dale Street are owned by the same person who, despite numerous requests from police to do so, has refused to sign the necessary paperwork, giving officers the power to make arrests on the property. We are working with the owner today. Hopefully we can uh, make some grounds, make some efforts and, and re receiving that paperwork, getting that paperwork signed. So we have uh, legal authority to enforce any issues, any potential crimes that are happening inside the building or on the property. Surveillance video shows a few people leaving with belongings as the fire grew. A couple of them came by me and asked me to dial 911. Firefighters say flames and thick smoke were shooting out of the home when they arrived, but no people were still on the property. They quickly knocked down the flames, but the fire did so much damage that the house was red tagged, meaning it's not safe for anyone to go inside. But there is definitely concern the squatters will be back. I already see guys circling the neighborhood waiting to get back in. So as soon as all the buzz goes down, I know that they're going to be back in there and it's going to continue. Crews boarded up the firehouse to keep people out, and they put up multiple warning signs. But the other property next door only suffered minor damage, creating concern that the squatters will all simply move over there. And we will continue to follow that situation. Remember, if there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Right now, fire crews mopping up the scene of a brush fire in the Far East County. We first brought you this as breaking news during the 5 o'clock hour. This is video from earlier when Chopper 8 was overhead near Potrero. We're told the fire broke out near a building on Potrero Valley Road near Harris Ranch Road. You can see drops there. Cal Fire says the fire was burning at a moderate rate of speed, but they were able to quickly attack it with those airdrops and get it under control. Crews will stay on the scene, though, until everything is fully contained. Right now, still not clear what caused the fire. Tonight, we're learning a 14-year-old boy hit by a hit-and-run driver in Escondido earlier this month has died. Police say he died at a hospital last night. The car hit the teenager almost two weeks ago on Fig Street near Far Avenue. Authorities believe he may have been riding a skateboard at the time. His name has not been released. Witnesses told police a gray sedan hit the boy and drove off. Right now, that driver still has not been found, but Escondido police ask anyone with information to please give them a call. Tonight, people in Oceanside are blaming military ships after finding medical waste washed up along the shore. Janice Jones with the Surfrider Foundation showed us what she and volunteers discovered last week. Two bags worth of expired IV bags and catheter equipment. Authorities confirm the waste is not biohazardous, but she tells us she's frustrated that someone would even think to dump something like this in the ocean. To think that it may have been dumped offshore as a way to get rid of it, um, again, is shocking, and I can't believe that happened. The Surfrider Foundation and Oceanside Lifeguards collected the trash. No other medical-related trash has been located out there since. Day two of the Democratic National Convention is in full swing right now in Chicago. This is a live look at the convention right now. They're actually wrapping up a ceremonial roll call. See, that'd be one of the delegates speaking right there. Vice President Kamala Harris and her running mate, Minnesota governor, accepted formally the party nomination in an online vote. Now, the theme for today is a bold vision for America's future. 
Former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama are set to take the stage tonight to lift the party up and move forward. Last night, President Biden was greeted with a long-standing ovation. It was the handoff Democrats wanted to see as he passed the torch to Vice President Harris. And tonight, we're continuing to follow a delegate from San Diego as he attends this year's convention. Mark Arabo, this is him. He says, because California is Vice President Harris's home state, all the California leaders and the delegates, they get to sit closest to the stage and all the action. He was there last night as President Biden took the stage and tells us the energy in the room was electrifying. It was very emotional. He was telling the crowd to calm down. If he didn't, we, we would go for another 20 minutes. It was incredible, and he deserves it. Now, Arabo calls last night's speech from President Biden a truly historic moment and one he'll never forget. And as night two is underway, he notes the energy and mood has shifted now to focus on moving forward and keep pushing until Election Day in November. And stay with CBS 8 for the latest on the DNC. We'll be joined by CBS 8 political analyst Laura Fink with more on what we can expect from day two coming up in our next half hour. San Diego police officers will soon be using lower voltage tasers as less lethal weapons in the field. As CBS 8's David Gofferson reports, officers say the new tasers only use 1,000 volts and are just as effective as the old tasers that used 50,000 volts. Take it, take it, take it. San Diego police demonstrated the new tasers they will be using in the field by shooting at an officer wearing protective clothing. Currently, officers use a taser that can only fire a single shot, deploying two darts, and both darts have to hit the suspect. There's 10 darts in this device instead of two. So the officers will have essentially 10 chances to use this device. Not only that, the distance of this device is f up to 45 feet versus 21 feet for the old device. The new model, Taser 10, uses 1,000 volts to temporarily immobilize a suspect. 50 times less voltage than the old taser, but still as effective in knocking someone down who is posing a threat to an officer. It would take somebody who is actively resisting uh, an officer, which means uh, they're doing some sort of physical action that limits the uh, officer's ability to control them and believed to be armed or in close proximity to a deadly weapon. The department will purchase 2,000 of the new tasers, costing nearly $10 million over the next five years. Taser 10s also have the ability to automatically start an officer's body-worn camera using Bluetooth. We're not completely there yet as far as how that's going to work, but that is an option with this device. While tasers are considered less lethal, there is still some risk in using them. 31-year-old Keenan Anderson died last year after being tased and stunned six times by Los Angeles police. But in general, tasers are intended to reduce the use of lethal force. There are risk factors with certain groups of people, obviously pregnant women, elderly, medical concerns. Those are all going to be addressed within our policy and the use of the taser. The department expects widespread deployment of these new tasers by the fall. David Gottfriedson, CBS 8. All right, schools in the Santee School District are welcoming students back to campus for the first day of classes tomorrow. And students will still be able to get breakfast and lunch for free. District officials say state funding is helping them to continue serving the meals at no extra cost to families. And this year, campus cafeterias will be known as the Trailblazer Cafe, which will be dedicated to providing healthy meals to fuel students both physically and academically have top-notch produce, our food quality is amazing, and um, our, all of our foods are made with whole grains, um, low in fat, low in sodium, so we're really providing our students with some awesome nutrition. And sign me up for this, we're told brunch for lunch is on wow. the menu for the first day of school. You can never go wrong with brunch for lunch. My little five-year-old, my new kindergartner, she told oh. me she has a salad bar at school. Wow. That's so special.
Of course, they're still going to go straight for the pizza. But. That is what she had for lunch today, <laughs> and she loved it. Yes. How much money do you need to save in order to retire early here in California? That's still ahead. Plus, California voters face a decision about how the state should punish people repeatedly convicted of certain crimes. We're diving into Prop 36 and what's at stake as we head to the polls in November. And the reason why grocery store chain Kroger is suing the federal government. Today was a hot one. We had widespread 90s as well as triple digits across inland areas. Today was the peak of the heat. We had some 80s along the coast, and we even had a record for a city. Go ahead and take a look at those details after the break.